So tell me about the first time you used alcohol or drugs. I think having that rice wine and that effect was the first time. And that was way before I even thought about just like, just running wild. Um, the effect from that, that was like my first use that I could remember. Um, but after I had left home, 15, then I started, I went to my grandmother, my grandmother's house, and I started really using them because I was out of school. I had quit school, uh, and I really started using with some people that lived in my grandmother's neighborhood. And um, so that became part of the everyday thing for me, and I adapted pretty quickly. Um, at six, 17, um, I had my first pregnancy, um, and I drank during that whole pregnancy, and I remember one day being very intoxicated um, and falling and hitting my back, and that baby died. I was like seven months pregnant, and the baby died. And that was like my first tragic experience with um, alcohol. Um, but it didn't stop there. Once I, you know, went to the hospital, um, got better and came out and drank again. Um, this is unknowing to having a problem. We didn't know he had a problem back then. Alcoholism wasn't discussed. Um, and I'm going back, wow, 40 years, you know, um, that wasn't discussed. And I just kept drinking, just kept drinking, just kept drinking. Um, marijuana came into play later on. And it, it, it kind of went hand in hand. And back then, it was very, very accessible. Marijuana, um, there was nothing wrong with that either, you know. And, I had my fair share of marijuana in Barbados. Um, by then, my mom had came to the United States, and soon after, I, my grandmother asked my mother to please see what she can do to get me to come and join her because there was nothing else that she can do. By that time, I, I was involved in every criminal activity you could think of, you know. I just was running wild in Barbados. <clears throat> so tell me about the progression <clears throat> of your use in, in running wild and, and what ultimately started out with the rice. The, right, the progression came while I was still in Barbados. I remember like almost every night coming home in a blackout where they have to actually bring me, knock on my grandmother's door and just throw me in the living room. Like, I drank till I was out. Um, and that went on for some time, and I think that's what prompted my, my grandmother after many talkings, you know, um, many talkings, and I would turn around and do it all over again. And I think that's what prompted my grandmother to ask my mom to please hurry up and get me out of Barbados. And when I came to the United States, um, I just kept on doing what I was doing. Um, I was introduced to harder drugs here, and I fell right in place. I didn't miss a beat. Um, and I kept using, and I kept using. Um, <clears throat> I done stole, manipulated, lied, lost many jobs. Um, I always try to work because I, I need to say that prior to all of that, my aunt had instilled very, very um, um, strong morals um, in me as far as being self-supporting, self-sufficient, respectful. So I had those, those core moral uh, values. However, once I started when I got here and I, and, I, and I continued using, I lost a lot of them. A lot of them were misplaced, I should say. And um, I kept on using and I, I met, you know, some people that weren't the nicest people in the world. And I then became some of those people. Um, 
and I went through the whole welfare system, you know, and um, I got pregnant right after coming here, arriving in this country, had my daughter, um, didn't stop using. Um, 11 years later, I had my son, didn't stop using. So using has always been a part of my story. And I lived, like they say, I lived to use and I used to live um, for many, many years. And sad to say, I never say it, saw anything wrong with it. Sad to say. Um, so. Tell me about some of the consequences of that that continued use after having the two children and you mentioned losing some jobs and what are some of the consequences? Consequences became, I became homeless, I became jobless, um, utter desperation, um, doing some horrible things um, to get money, to to, to um, get drugs, um, lying, you know, um, getting arrested. Um, so I, I had my share of um, 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 consequences. I was fortunate never, have, never having to do any time um, per se, but I have enough um, bouts with police of, police officers, you know. Um, at one point I was facing some serious charges and um, I was able to, I know that was God, I, I didn't know that until after that the person that was involved and kind of like took the weight and it kind of like cushioned my fall of going to prison because it was a real serious crime. So that was, it was an eye opener, but I still wasn't able to connect the dots. You know, it, 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 it put some fear, it, you know, it, it did plant some fear in me, but soon after that, once I was able to um, use again, that quickly like went away, you know, it was just something that kind of like glorified after a while.